Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Good morning. Take a moment to acknowledge each other's presence as we turn to the people around us. And on the seventh day of the octave of Easter, we take this time to pray for one another and lift each other's intentions to our Lord, remembering as well to pray for the peace that we long for, the end of violence of all kind against humanity, especially the unborn, remembering as well to pray for the poor families that struggle and victims of tragedies and calamities. Let's now begin our celebration with our entrance song led by our cantor. the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gathered to give glory and praise to God as we continue to bask in that light and joy of our risen Lord. To Him we also recognize His mercy and compassion in our need for forgiveness. And so we pray. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Bring light. To those in darkness, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn to the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then, when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have heard and seen. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, for he has been my savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the 11 were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The word gospel appears exactly two times in Mark's account of Jesus' life. The second time we just heard in the reading I just proclaimed, and the first time was all the way back at chapter 1, verse 1 of that, of that gospel, where he starts the gospel saying, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I think to the evangelist Mark, the gospel to be shared was that entire story from the beginning when he first appeared to the disciples of John the Baptist all the way to through the resurrection and beyond to this very day that that is the gospel, the good news that you and I are asked to proclaim. But what we also see in today's gospel is the doubt of the apostles. You see, the apostles had for th several years walked with Jesus. They heard him teach. They heard him explain things. They heard him minister. And yet, when Jesus died for them, that's when they first thought that the gospel ended on the cross with the death of Jesus. Even when others came and told them, Mary Magdalene, the people on the road to Emmaus, had come and told them they still had doubts. And I think that it was recognizing in their lives that period of darkness, that period where they had darks, doubts from the moment Jesus died to when Jesus appeared to them in resurrected form, that they suddenly realized and had what I would call a new conversion, a second conversion. Their first conversion being when they first met Jesus in his ministry and chose to lead their lives and follow. And then a second conversion when they truly recognized God in Jesus in that risen form and recognized him as the Son of God. And I think many of us recognize that are here this morning. We're here because we've had conversions in our lives, recognizing the presence of God. But we're called every time we encounter the risen Christ, you and I are called to recognize, to have a new conversion. And what, were the, what did the apostles do with their new conversion? They went and did exactly what Jesus said, went out and told every creature about Jesus. Now, how did they tell them? They didn't do it as a dispassionate newscaster that we might hear on a TV show. Yes, there was a great man in Galilee. He healed a couple people. He uh, performed a few miracles. And oh yeah, he died on the cross and his tomb is empty. No, they didn't report what happened. They shared from their personal experience what happened. 
Jesus appeared to me and touched me in my moment of darkness. The Spirit of God came upon me and gave me the courage and the strength to boldly proclaim the message of God. In what many think might be ordinary bread, Jesus appears to me every time I share in the breaking of the bread and I recognize the presence of God who becomes a part of me as I go out and proclaim the good news to others. That is the boldness that the leaders saw in the first reading from Peter and John. They had to share their personal experience. You and I are invited to share our faith, not by a list of facts, but by how Jesus has touched each one of us in a unique, personal way. When Jesus appeared to the apostles in our gospel reading today, he rebuked them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart. Let us pray that Jesus gives us the courage to open our hearts to boldly proclaim the good news, the gospel, to every creature in our lives. The risen Lord appears to the apostles and chosen witnesses so that through their testimony, people may believe in him and have life in his name. Our response, Lord, let us be your witnesses. Lord, let us be your witnesses. That we may have the courage to speak as boldly as Mary <coughs> Magdalene did and proclaim to others the good news of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. That like the apostles, we may rejoice to suffer for Christ's sake, obeying God rather than men. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. That like the two disciples on the way to the country, we may recognize the risen Christ through the scriptures and in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. That like the 11 apostles, we may have the inspiration and the strength to announce the gospel to every creature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. That the grace of Christ's resurrection may transform our lives, becoming agents of his mercy, channels of his love to others, and protectors of all creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in our hearts for our families and our loved ones. We lift up the intentions for whom this Mass is offered, the eternal repose of the souls of Belente Año, Victoria Pineda, and Sixto Loyola. We pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. For the intentions that have been submitted to us, for Dr. Tony Reyes, Nancy Coulter, June Marte, and Gloria Justiniani, we pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. For those in need of strength, healing, and comfort, for Lita Casillas, Anthony Nguyen, Lorenzo Moran, Brittany Whitmore, Brittany Rosales, Nancy Wetmore, Mary Ellen Matson, Evelyn Ding Lassan, Jasper Garcia, Brenda Maldonado, and Tony Vasco, we pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be your witnesses. For our dearly departed, Sioni de la Cruz, Manuel de Vera, Lavminda Mangohig, Angel Sarosa, Dennis Cahigal, and Richard Joseph Long, we pray to the Lord. Lord, let us be <coughs> your witnesses. Risen Lord, you declare to Thomas that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Without seeing you, we love you. Without seeing you, we believe and experience the indescribable joy of your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Lord has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, granted we her nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Santiago de Compostela, and with all the saints and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Thomas, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the priests, deacons, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and he in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. With you, peace with you, peace with you, peace with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those unable to receive our Lord Jesus sacramentally, take a moment for the spiritual communion prayer.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Tomorrow, uh, starting this afternoon, and tomorrow is our Getting to Know You weekend. It's the day where we not only wear our name tags, but we also write intentions that we entrust to one another to pray for. So after Mass, Ricardo, raise your hand, who is at the back, and we just celebrated his birthday a couple of days ago, will be asking for your assistance just to distribute the intentions. And he will make sure that each box has more than enough uh, papers for the intentions. So we would like to ask for your help, and we thank you for your generous gift of time. To this afternoon also, we will have the relic of St. Faustina here with us for the vigil of our celebration of the Sunday of Divine Mercy. And tomorrow at 3 p.m. after the 145 Mass, we will have the celebration of the feast here in the church with the exposition and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament and the blessing of St. Faustina's relic, as well as the showing of a short movie about the miracles of St. Faustina here, all happening here in the church. We now pray to our loving mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to St. Joseph, hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God, entrust this only Son. In you, Mary, place her trust. With you, Christ, was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us to the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast unto hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel <clears throat> of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia. Alleluia. Happy Easter.
Have a blessed Easter Saturday.